Yatuka Uwanri Yatuka Kavadum Yatuka Uwanrika Chotin Wanima Orata Wakata Chilu Yatuka Uwanrika Chotin Wanima Orata Wakata Chilumali Bram Tabat Yatuka Bram Tabat Halt, settler. This is a restricted area. How the hell did you get through the Kinrath? You should leave. He's a Jedi Master? Well, the bounty is going to be that much sweeter then. Nar Shaddai is paying extremely well for Jedi, especially if they're alive. I'm going to say this nice and simple for your little calf hurting head. Unless you want to wind up dead, leave now. What? That's a Jedi trick. We trained against that during the war. It's a Jedi, man. Kill him before he tries something else. Always rushing into action without thinking of the consequences. What? You're expecting thanks? Kunda is in danger, and you've ruined the best chance of averting a full-scale conflict. Right now, Dantooine is at a critical moment. If Kunda falls, then the Republic may lose control of this system. Still, I'm surprised you were able to get this far. Although you do have your Jedi training to fall back on. Every action has consequences, no matter how small or insignificant they seem. And even the smallest choice has the potential for harm. The Mandalorian Wars was proof of this. Intentions mean nothing of a greater tragedy is caused. I need to get to Kunda and warn them. They could be attacked at any moment. The mercenaries have allied themselves with the Exchange and are planning to attack Kunda. They've been holding off for the right moment. And now, since they lost their captive Jedi, they'll attack immediately. I'm going to try to reach Administrator Adari. Time is of the essence. Jedi I've heard reports of, and I am Azkul, 
leader of the mercenaries on Dantooine. That is correct, and I want you to help me. You don't need to know the details, but I can tell you there are a lot of credits involved. According to my reports, I have four times as many soldiers as the militia, and I am committed to taking Kunda. It is inevitable that I will succeed. If you wish to avoid my men eradicating the people of Dantuin, you will make it easier for me to take Kunda. Of course, I will pay well for your services. You'd better reconsider. I can't have a Jedi interfering with my plans. There is a considerable bounty on your kind that I will collect on unless you're working for me. I applaud your conviction. A lesser person might have deceived these brutes to avoid battle. Men, I trust you can handle this Jedi.
Yes? Thanks for the help. I see you have found the elusive Master Rook. He's told me that his rescue complicated our situation to some degree. I can't say that I anticipated that. I thank you for finding him, though. Vrook has informed me that the mercenaries devised a plan of attack to annihilate Kunda itself. I must ask for your aid again, Jedi. Zeron says that even with a plan, the mercenaries have to gather their forces, then coordinate their assault. So we still have time. I'm afraid the militia has not been adequately trained for the task that befalls them. Right now, just us and the militia. I don't want to create a needless panic. But be assured I will make sure that all civilians are warned in time so they can get to safety. Though if we lose this battle, nowhere on Dantooine will be safe for settlers for long. Our militia is effective at peacekeeping, but isn't prepared for a full-scale battle. If you can do anything to ready them for the reality of it, that would be helpful. Besides that, look around Kunda and see what you can do to strengthen our defenses. I know that we don't have the perimeter turrets online, and that alone could make a significant difference. Zeron says there is a considerable chance they will breach Kunda itself. Anything you can do to slow them down could turn the tide of battle. I have instructed the militia and other Kunda personnel that you are to be provided with anything that can be spared. Unfortunately, that isn't much. Here is a Mastercard key that will open all of the security doors inside Kunda. Anything that might aid you in your task, please use. Soon, all the civilians will be evacuated. So if you have any business with them, I suggest you take care of it. Whenever you are ready to finalize the defenses, talk with Zeron. Thanks, stranger. I should be back to duty in no time. The gun turret... malfunctioned. Hurt us bad. Thanks, stranger. I should be back to duty in no time.
Zeron was right about the mercenaries all along. I guess my ego clouded my j- We've been told to provide you with anything you need. We have to keep the news of the mercenaries' plans quiet for now. Charanana Gund Charanana Gundoso Katada Fiera Tora Pada no Ringatel Camarada Telefibu Numbu de Vitarana Cheni Rara Terewana Jun Conata de la Guna Tuna Dai Rinto Runca Recare Papanala Ranchinga Terace Womenoto Tore Senesenten Dear Rinto Runto Wakare Que Wap Jerebu, Ninso Telepachan Gorsada Ranane, Grail Gra, Delonuta Cholorin, Terewana Jun Conata de la Guna Tuna, Dai Rinto Runca Recare Papanala Ranchinga, Terace Womenoto Tore Senesenten. Dear Rinto Runto Wakare Que Wap Jerebu, Ninso Telepachan Gorsada Ranane, Grail Gra, Delonuta Cholorin, Terewana Jun Conata de la Guna Tuna, Dai Rinto Runca Recare Papanala Ranchinga, Terace Womenoto Tore Senesenten. Dear Rinto Runto Wakare Que Wap Jerebu, Ninso Telepachan Gorsada Ranane, Grail Gra, Delonuta Cholorin. Well, that's not something you see every day. Guess they can't take the Jedi out of the exile, can they? Well, whatever. We better keep moving. Didn't mean to waste your time talking. Let's move out. Let's leave this right here. 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 Thanks for the help. I Do you require anything else? Our militia is effective at peacekeeping, but isn't prepared for a full-scale battle. If you can do anything to ready them for the reality of it, that would be helpful. Besides that, look around Kunda and see what you can do to strengthen our defenses. I know that we don't have the perimeter turrets online, and that alone could make a significant difference. Zaron says there is a considerable chance they will breach Kunda itself. Anything you can do to slow them down could turn the tide of battle. Soon, all the civilians will be evacuated. So if you have any business with them, I suggest you take care of it. Whenever you are ready to finalize the defenses, talk with Zaron. We've been told to provide you with anything you need. I was right about you. You are trouble. But you might just be the right sort of trouble we need. The mercenaries aren't quick to mobilize, so you have time to do what you need. Or are you ready to finalize the defense plans? We could use people handy with a blaster. Getting people to join the militia for a short stint would be good. 
We also got a lot of things that could use fixing. It isn't glamorous, but that type of work sometimes makes a load of difference. Just look around. Plenty to be done. Off the top of my head, the three turrets outside Kunda are on the blink. They went haywire the other day and wounded some of my men, so we took them offline. The men who were wounded by the turrets are holed up in the med lab, but our medic droid is busted, so they're healing slowly. I've had some men lay traps around Kunda, but nobody here really specializes in demolitions. I'm sure there's some gaps that could be filled. The side security door to Kunda has been malfunctioning as long as I've been here. It may be best to just seal it off lockdown so nobody gets through. We got some broken assault droids that have been collecting dust for the last five years. If they were working, it would help a lot with interior defense. If I had it my way, I'd recruit any citizen of Kunda that can hold a blaster. But it's hard to convince peaceful farmers to fight, maybe die for a cause. I don't know for certain. It could be a day or even a week. Depends on how good Azkul is at organizing his men. I'm guessing not so good. When you're ready, come back and we can talk about the final plans to defend Kunda. A lot of people here hate Jedi. But when Thanks for the help. Since you're asking me, I suppose I could. I figure I still owe you for helping me with my thief problem. Zeron has asked me several times before to join the militia. So I expect he's going to be very pleased. Welcome back to... The things that... Welcome back. Is there anything else I can do for you? What else? All thanks. What else? All thanks. What else? right about the mercenaries all along. I guess my ego clouded my judgment as to told to provide you with anything you need. We have to keep the news of the mercenaries' plans quiet for now. Leave this right here. Let's leave this right here. Let's leave this right here. Thank you. 
heard a rumor that the administrator met with the Jedi. If that's true, I'll quit. You'll find little welcome here. Do you require anything else? Soon. I was right about you. You, the mercenary. Inspecting the perimeter, talking to the troops and coming up with a battle plan. I fought in a war or two, but I'm no general. In my experience, people like you are better at strategy. You want a hand in making the plan, you got it. You sure? Once we're done with that, there may not be any time left before the mercenaries attack. All right, then we got a lot to do. Since you are here to bolster Kunda's defense, I will hurry to the mercenary camp and delay their assault however I can. I imagine that the mercenaries have got two goals in this whole thing. Kill me and kill the administrator. The rest of the settlers won't have courage to resist if they succeed. The Administrator's locked up in her office tight, which means that the mercs have to go through us and Kunza's defenses. Thanks to you, they're gonna have a tougher job. That's about it. Now we just need to dig in and wait for the mercs to come. Well, I'll tell them what's there to do. I'm not much for words. All right, I'll assemble the men. I hope you can speak good. much better with words than me. I think it'll really help. Let's get ready for the mercenaries. If we fall here, all of Dan Twain falls with us.
I didn't sign on for this cold-blooded slaughter, Ascol. I was wondering when you would betray me, Dopak. I'll send your final wages to your children, along with a detonator. Sorry I was held up, but it looks like I've arrived in time to pull you out of your predicament. Kill them all. much for your aid. You can be sure that Dantooine will not forget how the Jedi protected us. In this we are a humble community, and this conflict has greatly diminished our resources. I hope this reward will be sufficient. I am humbled by your generosity. I will put this to good use. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have much work to do. Dantooine will be slow to rebuild, but I am confident now that we will one day achieve prosperity. Kunda is safe in no small part due to you. I feel certain that the Administrator wouldn't have made it without your assistance. I may have misjudged you. In any case, I am free to talk about whatever you wish. There are a few of us left. I do not even know if the others still live. We may be the last. We've been forced to divide our forces and retreat to places which will be difficult for our enemies to detect and attack. We have chosen to hide our presences from each other, so that the discovery of one will not endanger the others. We cannot. And we have resolved not to until we have found where the Sith are striking from. But even as our numbers thin, there is still no trace of them. We had hoped to outmaneuver them. By letting them believe themselves victorious, we thought they would become bold and step from the shadows. Then, all of us who remained vowed to meet here on Dantooine. From here, we can plan a course of action and carry the battle to them. But so far they remain in hiding, and Jedi continue to vanish and die. You have more questions for me? Because you defied the Council and followed Revan to war. And from that war came another. Do you know how many worlds were destroyed in those wars? Dantooine, Telos, Sirocco? Do you see now why we counseled caution instead of action? You were the only one to come back and face judgment. But that was because you had lost your connection to the Force. Another casualty of war. No doubt you still blame us for your exile. I had hoped your isolation would give you time to reflect on what had happened, what you had done. But I see it as not. You have more questions for me? We did nothing to you. Accuse us if you will, but it will not change the truth. Cutting one off from the Force. Such punishments are reserved for only a few. Although it was within our power, we did not inflict such a loss upon you. Your loss was a casualty of war. No more. Perhaps it is Dantooine, but I do not feel such from you. I feel nothing but what I felt in the Council Judgment Chamber on Coruscant so long ago. Still, you and your... connections were often a subject of debate in the Council. It is possible that returning to known space, journeying with others, has caused the Force to stir within you again. You have more questions for me? Force bonds? Yes. It is the bond that grows between master and student. Are you saying you have bonded with another? Such bonds normally grant strength to both. 
but not to such a degree. Are you certain? Perhaps it is merely what you believe. Still, your ability to form such connections, to influence others, was always a subject of discussion, even when you were a student here. Perhaps it is a punishment of a sort. But a bond that ties two lives together, such bonds do not seem natural to me. And with your loss of connection to the Force, it seems such a connection would be impossible. Perhaps it is Dantooine, but I do not feel such from you. I feel nothing but what I felt in the Council Judgment Chamber on Coruscant so long ago. Still, you and your... connections were often a subject of debate in the Council. It is possible that returning to known space, journeying with others, has caused the Force to stir within you again. You have more questions for me? Have they? I've seen no evidence of them upon Dantooine. Only murderers and raiders. Why would they attack you? There are no Jedi. You cannot feel the Force. For some reason, I believe you. Still, I am curious as to how they would know to find you. Your trial was not public knowledge. Regardless, these Sith have struck, and you survived. This is more knowledge than I had before. And that means the Jedi may gather. If you can find others, or find some trace of the Sith threat, then we shall gather here on Dentween. And from there we may decide what can be done. Do you have more questions for me? We're at war, but it is unlike any war we have fought before. We have yet to even meet our attackers in battle. Somehow our enemy is targeting us through the Force, striking, then retreating to the shadows. The gathering of any Jedi seems to attract them like a beacon. So it was necessary to divide our forces and conceal ourselves for a time until we could learn more of this threat. How did you know of Qatar? Few knew it was one of the gathering worlds for the Jedi. But yes, Qatar was one such place. Now the planet is no more. Master Zar, Master Dorak, and many more perished there. And we do not know why or how. But all life on the planet ceased to exist. I was not on Qatar when it was destroyed, but now that it is dead, it has left its echo. Like Dantooine. It was after Qatar that the few of us left realized that wherever we gathered, we were placing others in danger, not just Jedi. Great tragedies, old battlegrounds. Places of suffering all leave wounds on the galaxy and in the Force. In such places, the deaths of so many echo. So much so that it is difficult to center oneself. By coming here, those echoes serve to mask my presence, allowing me to investigate the ruins and try to find some clues as to who our attackers are. The Mira Luka world of Qatar taught us a terrible lesson. Many Jedi gathered there in an attempt to use the Force to find the location of the enemy. Now the planet is no more. Master Zar, Master Dorak, and many more perished there, and we do not know why or how. But all life on the planet ceased to exist. I was not on Qatar when it was destroyed, but now that it is dead, it has left its echo, like Dantooine. It was after Qatar that the few of us left realized that wherever we gathered, we were placing others in danger, not just Jedi. You have more questions for me? I suppose there is something I should show you. It will keep you alive long enough to prove useful. You may lack the discipline for this, but I will attempt to teach you anyway. This form is considered the pinnacle of Force Mastery. Now watch carefully. This subtle technique enhances the duration of many Force powers at your disposal. 
However, the focus required for this form can drain your energy quickly and leave you vulnerable to force attack. <laughs> I don't know how you learned that so quickly. Still, your form is sloppy. Keep practicing to tighten it up and you'll be fine. Fighting the mercenaries, just amazing. I wish I were a Jedi too. It was pretty brave of you to stand up to Azkul like that. Your resolve made me finally take action against him. I'm happy to hear that. I really am. Thanks again, and good luck to you. I saw you fighting the mercenaries. Just amazing. I wish I were a Jedi, too. Zeron was right about the mercenaries all along. I guess my ego clouded my judgment as to what's best for Kunda. Yes? You may ask. It is not possible to dock at the Academy without the proper codes. Yes, but I could not give them to you. fighting. I'm glad we both made it through. And the mercenaries didn't. Those mercenaries were pushovers. Back again, huh? But it's nice to...
It has been some time. The years have not been kind to us both, it seems. But perhaps now they will see the truth at last. It is not as it was. But perhaps that is for the best. We were wondering when you would arrive. This moment has taken some time to reach us, and I imagine you have many questions. Or perhaps you've come for revenge. You already know the answer. You've noticed it in those who travel with you. Have you noticed that when you act, others follow? Those that travel with you? They follow you without question, without hesitation. Against their instincts, and sometimes against their sense. It is because you are a leader, but that still fails to grasp the meaning of what I'm trying to tell you. It is not an easy thing to explain. Surely you are familiar with force bonds. It is the bond that develops between apprentice and master when one truly understands another. It is developed over time through understanding of each other. And yet you do it so easily and we do not know why. You make connections through the force and it resonates with those who travel with you. The resonance is even greater when they too are force sensitive. Your actions affect others more than you know. You draw others to you, especially those strong in the Force. When you suffer, their spirit echoes it. And when they are in pain, their pain becomes yours. We do not know, but it is not the first time you felt the weight of so many lives. And that is why the Mandalorian Wars echo within you still. We did not cut you off from the Force. You were merely deafened to it. Because of that last battle of the Mandalorian Wars. The screams of countless thousands, Jedi and Mandalorians, crushed by the planet's gravity, annihilated. Their lives still scream across the surface of that dead planet, and within you. To hear the Force over such pain, it is not possible. It was too much for any Jedi to endure. And it is a wonder that you did not die there when thousands perished. All those you had fought with and struggled with. You cut yourself off because you had to if you were to survive. You had hints of it in the war on Doxon. Malachor was simply the final blow. You were deafened. At last, you could hear. You were broken. You were whole. You were blinded. And at last, you saw. When you returned to us, we saw what had happened. You carry all those deaths at Malachor within you, and it has left a hole, a hunger that cannot be filled. In you, we saw a wound in the Force. In you, we saw the end of the Force. Yes, you can feel the Force, but you cannot feel yourself. You are a cipher, forming bonds, leeching the life of others, siphoning their will and dominating them. It is the teaching of these new Sith to feed on others, on other Force sensitives. They are symptomatic of the wound in the Force. You are a breach that must be closed. You transmit your pain, your suffering through the Force. Within you we see something worse than merely the teachings of the Sith. What you carry may mean the death of the Force, and the death of the Jedi. So you think. It is not the strength of a Jedi you feel. He's right. It's all the death you've caused to get here. You feed on it, and you grow stronger. You're like Malachor. It's in you, it's what you are now. 
You must have noticed as you fought across all these planets, killing hundreds, only to become more and more powerful. Why do you think that was? But what's worse is that bonding you have. It hasn't gone away. It's gotten stronger, and the more attachments you form, the more you draw others to you. And that is why you are a threat to us all. What if other Jedi went to war as you did, suffered the same events, and emerged as you did? What if there was a crucible that trained such Jedi to consume and kill? For you, Malachor was that crucible. What's worse is these Sith that we face. I fear that they have learned the lesson of Malachor all too well. It is what allows them to prey on Force users, to become stronger when Force sensitives are near. Somehow they have learned their hunger from you. And so you have brought about the end of the Jedi, and perhaps all the knowledge of the Force. But it is of no consequence. Your ability to make such connections, such bonds, so easily are why you cannot remain. You are a threat to living creatures and all who feel the Force. You will lead the Sith here, and that we cannot allow. Our judgment before remains. Exile. You must leave. And you must leave without your tie to the Force. It is a punishment reserved for only a few, and only when necessary. But we have the power to cut you off from the Force, and it must be done. Forgive us, but it is necessary. Do not be afraid. You shall feel no pain, but this must be done. As long as you feel the Force, you are a danger to those around you. Enough! Step away from him. What? Step away! He has brought truth, and you condemn it? The arrogance! You will not harm him. You will not harm him ever again. I thought you had died in the Mandalorian Wars. Die? No. Became stronger. Yes. Is this your new master, Exile? If so, then you follow Revan's path. Her teachings will cause you to fall as surely as he did. The Sith out, and now they have come to us. As you would pass judgment on him, I have come to pass judgment on you all. Do you wish to feel the teachings born of the Mandalorian Wars? Of all wars, of all tragedies that scream across the galaxy? Let me show you. You, who have forever seen the galaxy through the Force. See it through the eyes of the Exile. How could you ever hope to know the threat you face when you have never walked in the dark places of the galaxy, faced war and death on such a scale? If you had traveled far enough, rather than waiting for the echo to reach you, perhaps you would have seen it for what it was. There is a place in the galaxy where the dark side of the Force runs strong. It is something of the Sith, but it was fueled by war. It corrupts all that walks on its surface, drowns them in the power of the dark side. It corrupts all life, and it feeds on death. Revan knew the power of such places, and the power in making them. They can be used to break the will of others, of Jedi, promising them power and turning them to the dark side. Did you never wonder how Revan corrupted so many of the Jedi, so much of the Republic, so quickly? The Mandalorian Wars were a series of massacres that masked another war, a war of conversion, culminating in a final atrocity that no Jedi could walk away from, save one. And that is what I sought to understand. How one could turn away from such power, give up the Force, and still live. But I see what happened now. It is because you were afraid. It is done. He is no more. Take me to Atris. She will have the strength to do what the Council cannot.
handmaiden took her. She thinks Kreia killed you. Because that's the lie Kreia told her, that's why. The only thing that matters is the handmaiden believes it. And she's gonna react exactly how that old witch hoped she would. That's why she wanted the handmaiden on board, you know. So she could use her to reach the Telos Academy whenever she wished, without needing the access codes. She would, if she thought she was bringing Atris a prisoner, especially a Sith Lord. She'll take her to Telos, and Atris will do what she'll do to anyone she thinks is a Sith. Are you surprised? All that talk of hatred, manipulation, and standing on your own two feet? Sorry, you don't get any more Sith than that. Still, if we were all judged by who we were in the past, I don't think you'd understand who we are now. That's what I was afraid you'd say. What is wrong? Something troubles you. I can feel it. I do not understand what you mean. I would die for you. When I tell you my life for yours, it is my choice. And if there is an ending between us where my sacrifice can save you, it will be because it is my desire, not your will. I simply do. And sometimes there is no reason that can be given. What did you learn within the Jedi Academy? Then that is the danger of their beliefs. They do not understand you, what it means to be human, to lead. The feelings I have for you are because of what I see, what I hear in your voice. All that tells me you are a natural leader. I follow because I believe in you. I would die for you because I believe in you. And where they look at you and see the death of the Force, I look at you and see hope for all life. I look at you and see that perhaps a life untouched by the Force is not the punishment it is believed to be. I will understand if you feel you must go on alone, but I ask that you do not. Instead, take strength from your connection to others. Do not forsake them as you did in exile. He awaits you at Telos. If you go there, you must face him. And when you do, he will wound you as he has wounded me. I ask you, I beg you, to stay here with me. I know, but I could not let you go without asking you this last time. I have never asked you for anything. I have fought alongside you, would have given my life to you many times over. And now there is something I must ask. I want to look upon you where no one else can see, where it is just us. I want to see your face, the color of your skin. I wish to see what the handmaiden sees when she looks at you. That causes her heart to race and her tone to change. What causes her to forsake her heritage, her oaths, as you made me forsake mine. I need to know if perhaps I am wrong. If the universe is not as my master once showed me. From the moment I heard your voice across the galaxy, I have longed for you. It is the echo, a wound that travels still, that when heard, made me understand that there was another wounded as I was. One who had felt the same sense of loss. When I heard it, I loved you more than my own life. 
And I wanted you to be here with me for as long as you will let me love you. Stay. And I want you to see what I see when I gaze upon you. I want you to know why I cannot look at you and why I am drawn to you. I know, and yet it was something that had to be spoken, if nothing but to hear the echo. Forgive me. Who is there? Who I am is not the question. I am Atris, Jedi Master. The last historian of the Jedi. The last of the Jedi. Those are titles, words you cling to as the darkness falls around you. You are that which has attacked the Jedi. You are Sith. Sith is a title, yes, but like you, the title is not who I am. It is not what I believe. For you, it is different. Know that there was once a Darth Traer and that she cast aside that role, was exiled, and found a new purpose. But there must always be a Darth Traer, one that holds the knowledge of betrayal, who has been betrayed in their heart, and will betray in turn. You have bathed in the knowledge of the Sith, but there is not enough truth in such teachings. But it will be a step for you. How did it happen? Search your heart. It was never battle that called to you, never battle that caused you to fall. Alakor V has touched many things, and it casts its echoes still. Why did he betray me? You betrayed yourself. Do not blame the exile. And unlike you and I, there is still a chance that one may be saved, the one that you cast out. Where is the exile? I had thought... Oh, he will come, but it will be too late to save either of us. It is such a quiet thing to fall, but far more terrible is to admit it. Your mistress awaits. She has much to share with you. The last of the handmaidens is before us. It is good that you have returned. You have much to answer for. What are you saying? You have betrayed us. You have betrayed Atris. You are no longer one of us. You followed the Jedi, betrayed your oath. Listen to me. Atris has been touched by the Sith. It is not too late for... Silence. It is a crime to kill blood, but not to kill a betrayer as you. Then you shall fall. Where have you been? You have been absent so long, I feared for your safety. Were you with the exile all this time? Mistress, as you commanded, I... Commanded? Did I command you to consort with him? To follow his teachings? To betray your oath? Mistress, I do not understand. I... Of course you do not. But you will learn. This will teach you.
Enough. Did you have feelings for him? Did you touch him? Did you look upon him with love? There is no love in that one. He is a shell, devoid of emotion. All that he was died at Malachor, and he dies there still, as he should. So, one exile has arrived to save another. Do you care so much for her that you have come all this way? Perhaps you have feelings after all. Such a noble offer. Your execution has been too long delayed, exile. She said you would come here, to this place. If you think you can defeat me here, you are wrong. All this collected knowledge, all these teachings of combat and the Force, they are mine to command. And if I must use it to end you, I will. Surrender. You need not die. Atris. That is not who I am, not any longer. She has not existed for some time, I think. There was always something else within me just took time for its voice to be heard. The old woman you travelled with finally made me listen to myself, to the galaxy. She said that you would come here, and that you would face me in battle. Yes, the Sith are here at last. You have brought them to this place as I had foreseen. It has all been part of my plans for you. And when I defeat you and the forces you have brought to Telos, I shall take the battle to the heart of the Sith and wipe them out forever. I do not know, yet, but it does not matter. They have come here to face the Republic in battle and they will be destroyed. Yes, the Sith are here at last. You have brought them to this place as I had foreseen. It has all been part of my plans for you. And when I defeat you and the forces you have brought to Telos, I shall take the battle to the heart of the Sith and wipe them out, forever. These Sith are cowards, striking from the shadows to kill Jedi. I needed a target to draw them out, but I could not risk my own life, all that remained of the Jedi. So I arranged for you to return to the Republic, leaked information of your past, and then waited for the Sith to come. And they did. But you came to Telos against my predictions. Now they are here, I can finally face this enemy and defeat them. All the knowledge of the Sith, gathered from across the galaxy, brought here by my servants, so that I might uncover their secrets, and use them to track them down. But now they have been drawn from the shadows of the Outer Rim, and the only final matter to attend to is finishing you. Surrender to you, never. Let us end this! <laughs> Kill me. End this. I did not expect mercy from you, here at the end, after all that has happened between us. Vatera Kurashna Narajea!
Shish, If you will not kill me, then what will you do? You always knew where they were striking from. You always knew. These Sith are spawned of you. Spawned by the Mandalorian Wars. All those deaths. All those Jedi. Their power is to feed on life. Until nothing is left except a hollow galaxy. Echoing with the screams of the Jedi lost to us. Yes. I had thought she was awaiting me at that place. But I see now that she lied. It was not meant for me. But for you. She has gone there. She is waiting for you to travel to Malachor 5 to finish what you started. Yes, you are an echo in the Force. A hollow space where it has been wounded. It takes a great act of destruction to create such emptiness. But it can be done. It creates places where the Force is difficult to hear and difficult to find one's way. And you carry it with you, always. Now she seeks to create another echo, a wound in the Force, greater than the one before, greater than the one you caused. It will deafen all touched by the Force until no life is left. You were strong enough to withstand it once, but few have your strength in such matters, especially if they are unprepared. I do not know, but she needs you there. If you choose not to follow, she will murder herself at the heart of Malachor and you will die along with her. You are important to her somehow, but I... But I do not know for certain. She is willing to sacrifice herself at the heart of that graveyard world for you. A choice others have made in the past. A choice I wish to make. It is because I care for you, and I suspect that you alone hold that place in her heart where nothing else lives. And that is why you are the only one who can stop the destruction to come. She seeks the death of all Jedi, all Sith, and the death of the Force. It is madness. It is impossible. But she believes you are the key. There are places in the galaxy dead to the Force where nothing lives, where the Echoes travel forever and do not reach their destination. And these places may be created even from the simplest of events, the slightest of motions. One person, at the right place, at the right time, can change the face of the galaxy, or end it. Because the Force had been stripped from her, as it had been torn from you. At times, I wonder what we would be if the Force was taken from us. If we would truly be Jedi or Sith, or simply human. You are important to her somehow, but I... But I do not know for certain. And what will you do with me now? Abandon me here on this dead world, or end my life as I wish to end yours? I tied my life, my decisions, to the Jedi. Perhaps only in separating myself from the Jedi can I become myself again, learn who I am. Perhaps exile is what I deserve, even though it is many years too late and you have already returned. <laughs> Leave now, while you can. Save Telos. Save the galaxy. Save yourself. You came for me. I thought I had lost you. Kreia. She said the Council had ended you. And all along she was one of those who had sought to kill us. When I heard 
letters say that you were dead. I... I failed you. I let my emotion run through me and I acted without thinking. I wanted to punish her. Hurt her. See her answer for what she had done to the Jedi for leading you to the Council. Of course. Uh, forgive my display. I... I am the last of the Handmaidens no longer. I am Brianna, disciple of the last of the Jedi, and the one who will stand with you against all enemies who face us. It is good to hear it, after so long. We have here. I didn't believe it when Linu reported the Ebon Hawk at dock, but I guess it really has. Though given the trouble we've been having, maybe I shouldn't be surprised to see you. Lieutenant Gren, Sith forces have breached the module and are attempting to pen us up in the compound. Damn! Zeron! I need you and your men to break through and lead the assault. With pleasure, Lieutenant. All right. Follow me. It came out of nowhere. A fleet of warships dropped out of hyperspace, and before we could scramble fighters to intercept them, we were under attack. There were Sith fighters everywhere, and the few flights we sent out were barely launched when the bombardment began. We did our best, but we couldn't stop the landing craft that followed the initial wave. We couldn't hold back the Sith troops. We chose to retreat and began the evacuation instead. Then there's also the fuel situation. Because we don't have enough fuel, we won't be able to keep the station in orbit and operational and fight off the Sith at the same time. We'll try to make the best of what we have left, but it's going to be cutting it pretty close. The Sith numbers seem limitless, but we haven't lost all hope. We've heard reports that we might be receiving some assistance. A squad of troops sent by Queen Talia are currently trying to keep the Sith from sabotaging the station's fuel system. Does this mean you won't be putting us into force cages again? If you need to get to the Ravager, then you're going to have to fight your way to the shuttle from here to the entertainment module, then make your way to the docking shuttle. Good luck. Something up? All right. It's another story. 